Welcome back to JB Reviews. I have this Ford F-350 that I rented and I really want to talk about axle ratios and gearing, things like that. So something that a lot of people do when they buy the Ford 7.3 is they probably are planning on using it for towing. And a lot of people are looking to use these trucks for towing fifth wheels. So naturally, what most people do is they go for the lowest gear they can get. So this truck here, this is an F-350. It has a 373 axle ratio in the rear end. Now, that's the standard axle for this truck. If you get an F-250, I've said it wrong a few times, so I'm gonna make sure I say it right in this video. If you get an F-250, it's a 355. However, you can go to a 430 with either the three quarter ton or one ton for 7.3 liter V8. Before we go any further in this uh, video, I want to show you something that Big Trippy RV said. He explained gear ratios the best. So I'm going to jump in where he talks about low gearing versus higher gearing, and then we'll jump back into the video. So how do we explain gear ratios using a bicycle? You probably understand that depending on what gear you're in changes the effort that goes into pedaling. And the faster you pedal generally would mean the larger the sprocket that you're on. So in the case of my bike, if I wanted to pedal really, really, really fast, but not actually go anywhere very fast, I would put my bike in this largest gear up here. Now, even though I'm pedaling really fast and I'm not going anywhere really fast, I have a tremendous amount of power going to this back tire. So if I wanted to climb anything, if I wanted to pull anything, I would want to be in this gear. So this specific sprocket here at the very back of this assembly is actually my lowest gear. So whenever you talk about low gear ratios on a truck, you are really talking about the gear ratio that allows the engine to spin up faster, but apply more torque to the ground at a lower overall speed. I was going to explain it myself, but I felt like, you know what, with him using his bike, I feel like that was like perfect and I didn't want to try to match that. So again, be sure to watch his video at the end of this one if you want a little bit more information on what he said in that video. But another thing that is probably important, if you do have like an older truck, in a lot of cases, you can find like a tag on the axle that will tell you what gear ratio it is. Or what some people would do is they'll mark the tire and then they'll spin the drive shaft. They'll have, you have to mark basically, you know, on the axle and on the drive shaft, and then you have to spin it. It has to obviously be up in the air, and then you could count how many times you spin the axle to one turn of the tire. So those are just ways that you could figure it out if your truck doesn't have it. Ford does it the best, I think, because all they do is they put a um, code here. So this axle is 3E, so that's going to be a 373, and this is an electronic locking axle too. So they give you that stuff online. I think they do it the best. Ram doesn't give it to you unless it's on the uh, window sticker. It'll say either standard or it'll say as an option. So on the GMs, they just stick with one of the newer trucks. So you know that you have either a 342 on the diesel or a 373 on the gas. Ford and Ram HDs are the only manufacturers that give you an option for lower gearing for the gas engines. If you are looking at a GMC or Chevy HD, the 6.6 liter gas only has a 373 rear end, which is standard. Now, the good news is for 2024, they are putting the 10 speed behind that 6.6 liter, and that should really close the gap between this in the 7.3. I think that's probably why they did it. Now, I don't think they added any horsepower or torque to the gas engine, but they're saying that that 10 speed should really wake up the 6.6. But if you are looking at a gas option, should you pick a 373 or a 430 if you're looking at an F350? Or if you're looking at a Ram, should you get the 410 or just stick with the 373, which comes from the factory that way? And in order for me to answer that question, I would ask you a question. How often and how heavy do you plan on towing? Because that's probably where the line will have to be drawn in the sand. And the other question would be, where do you plan on towing at? Because in a lot of cases, these trucks are not built 
to actually tow the maximum weight that you see online. For example, if this truck had the 430 rear end and it had, I think the 20 inch wheels, it could tow up to 20,000 pounds. Now, obviously, I'm pretty sure this truck could tow 20,000 pounds in the perfect world. The problem is, no matter how you slice it, your payload capacity will always limit what you can tow. And the sad thing about it is, this truck can probably tow more than its diesel counterpart because of how high the payload is. 3,956 pounds of payload is big. And it's mostly in part to this having the 18s and it doesn't have really any options. The only heavy option that this truck has is probably the spray and bed liner and the fifth wheel prep package. Apart from that, this truck is pretty much bare bones. So with that being said, if you really want my honest opinion, here's what I will tell you. This truck is perfect for about 15,000 pounds. And even that might be a stretch because depending on how you carry your passengers and how you carry your gear, that might limit you too with how much you can hook up to a trailer. Now most people will tell you, you don't have to worry about payload, but you do, and here's why. The 2023 Fords and GMs are going to be adding scales on the trucks. And those scales, a lot of people are saying, oh, they're just to make sure you know how much you're loading up on the truck. Yeah, sure. And I believe that. It is definitely there to help you too. But I think it's there to help the manufacturer too to make sure that you're not overloading the trucks. So in my opinion, the 373 is perfect for anybody buying a HD truck in the Ford segment or the Ram segment. Now I will say in Ram, you probably would have to step up to a 410 because with that 410, it gives you close to that 15,000 pound towing capacity. But I think it goes up to like 16,000 pounds. So you might need to get the 410 to get extra towing capacity at least close to 15,000 pounds. But in my opinion, you do not need the 430 with this truck. However, there is one scenario that I figured out, and I think that a lot of people should take note of this because I didn't know this, and I didn't think about it until I watched a video from Samora V. He did a video talking about gas versus diesel, and I wanna let you guys hear what he said. Hold on one second. If you're towing something big and you need the diesel, it's the way to go, and remember that gasoline engines lose According to Ford, lose three to four percent of their power for every one thousand feet of elevation. When I heard Ryan say that, a light bulb went off in my head, and that's when I figured out if you plan on traveling to areas where you have to go really high in elevation, or if you live in an area like Utah that's well above sea level, you definitely want to consider a 430 rear end because you're gonna lose three to 4% of your horsepower the higher you go in elevation. It was every thousand feet you go up. So when I heard him say that, I think for the sacrifice of that horsepower, you have to gear the truck lower out back to compensate for it. Now, something you have to understand, if you live in Florida, if you live in a state that is just below sea level, you don't have to worry about gearing the truck lower. You know why? Because this gas engine and the Rams uh, Hemi have more gear. So this has a 10-speed transmission and the uh, 8HP 75 in the Ram has an 8-speed transmission. So this 10-speed transmission has deep gears. If it's the same as the um, diesel, um, I'll show it to you here online, but I want to say it's geared like in first gear, like a four something. And even second and third are pretty darn deep. So you don't really need the lower gearing if you live in Florida, because as I mentioned earlier, you're never gonna be able to tow 20,000 pounds with a 430 rear end Ford F-350 and not exceed your payload. There's no way you can do that. And one last thing to consider, that's where diesels come in and just kill gas engines, because these trucks are gonna lose a lot of horsepower, not a lot of horsepower, it's gonna lose three or 4% of their horsepower in high elevations, right? With a diesel, these have forced induction. So you don't have to worry about that because those turbos are gonna compensate for the power loss. So in my opinion, because these trucks have you know, better gearing and because they have so much horsepower and torque, even though you lose a little bit of it, you probably will never feel it compared to the gas engine. I could bet you, 
and higher elevations, if you had higher gearing, this truck will probably tug if you're going to grades, especially steep grades at like 8% in those cases, you'll probably start feeling a lug feeling because you're not able to utilize the horsepower because of the elevation. So I wonder if the manufacturers are gonna ever offer some type of um, kit or something that you know will compensate for the loss in horsepower because I do know on generators, like I have a generator right here, there is something that you can buy. I don't know what it's called. I'd have to look it up real quickly, but you can actually um, do something internally with these. That way, if you're at a higher elevation, you don't lose all the um, power that you would get in that higher elevation if you need to run your uh, RV or whatever you're using it for. But again, I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and be sure to share some comments down below. Matthew Anderson, I know you're going to say something because we talked about this. So let me know in the comment section what you guys think about the higher elevations, things like that. Or do you think you still need the 430 if you live in Florida? I mean, hey, maybe you think you need it. Maybe you live on a farm and you need to tow 20,000 pounds around your farm. I don't know. See you guys in the next video.